locked in and the Janna going to come on through. I wonder, thinking the Janna was not the problem. It was the Rumble that was the problem in that second game of the series. Now the Rumble is banned. Janna comes through as the answer to recover once more. Now, do we see an early pickup of something like that Talia from Rookie? Um, I haven't particularly uh, liked seeing Realm Champions, which uh, don't get to have that roaming impact in this series, at least. I think that his team needs him to do that. I think Rookie, on an individual level, has been doing pretty well. It's just what his team needs him to do to stabilize the rest of the map. So it is going to be that Talia, it's going to be that Jinx. What this means that is you have Rookie being able to peel for long-range reset carry of Fosic and also be able to roam onto the map. We were saying we probably shouldn't see that Talia from Rookie what? again. Still locked it. Why are we zooming in on the tissues, lads? What's <laughs> going on here? Is uh, Wayward going to be offering for his top lane pick? I mean, uh, that's just sent me a bit. Fofo gets his Azir again, so very much a late game. Carries on both sides, but a lot of proactivity there for Rookie in the early and mid game, too. Okay, so now with, uh, you know, Slayer Jinx versus the Zeri Azir, both again, double long range scaling carries on both sides. It does feel like, um, you know, Bofa had a really good answer into the Jinx in terms of just team fighting. Felt like Botek has been overstepping. You can't afford to overstep into Bofa's as if. It's been very, very good at punishing on this one. So what are we looking for now? Combos that could work for Aki and Rookie to work together. The Nocturne's one of them. Potentially something like the Vi would also be a good pick as well. wonder if that would be banned away by WE. Something that has been banned a couple of times this series already. Nocturne, the Poppy. Could potentially see a Maokai ban as well from the side of NIP. It's something that Hung has looked good on. It's something that's very good currently in the meta. Whether or not you want to play Maokai alongside the Azir is a different question, but certainly good as the uh, kind of just disengaged jungler. We're going to see ourselves a Rek'Sai ban finally. That might be good here, I think. I mean, do you really care about the other jungle pairings compared to the impact that that Rek'Sai's had? I mean, yes, the Talia can answer it in terms of the minefield being put down, but I feel like that'll be a good ban. Yeah, and it's finally call. taken away. So Wayward's going to go away with that one. We could still see Wayward going towards something like a Gragas, which is pretty fine in terms of his playmaking. As the other pick he showed against uh, OMG, that looked pretty okay too. Let's see where WE are going to go with this one. Feels like they're very comfortable with what they've got here. The kind of hands off, or not hands off, but you know, keeping at arm's length. And that Maokai that we talked about will be locked in for Hunk. So again, disengage with this Janna, with this Maokai, and then long range carries. Okay, so now, NIP, you are playing into stuff that you can't really dive into that easily. What has Aki got left that could really influence this game on a aggressive front? You could look towards something like the Sejuani that can throw out ults from a long range. Because again, you don't have to throw your body into the play at that point. There's no trundle this time to uh, shred your resistances down. That'll be locked in. I don't think you need the melee synergy. You just need that ultimate to be an engaged threat from range. Alongside the Rakan, that's nice. At least you're not into the Rex side this time, but the Renekton hasn't impressed so far for Shanji. No, it certainly hasn't. Let's see what Shanji can do. Big smile on Wayward's face there. As the Cassante is locked in for the top side. The Sejuani Renekton. Will we see more proactivity this time from NIP? We wanted a bit more of a scrap when they locked this combo in earlier on in the series alongside Rookie's Yone. Bit of a weird game. WE played around it extremely well. We need to see more aggression, honestly, on the top side if you're going to play this Renekton Sejuani combo. But then the inherent issue with that is that even when Renekton Sejuani and Renekton Jax, oh no, rather like the Jax Sejuani was really, really meta, Kasanse answered those duos because if you play it right, you get your W. Um, unstoppable and damage reduction through that combo, then the combo falls apart. So Wayward in a position to be a strong frontline again that can influence the game. I feel like this Cassante is a great last pick for him. NIP, they do need to find some early advantages. Get Rookie out onto the map onto the Talia. That has been often been a winning factor for them. They won their Talia game, and I feel like that will be once again all eyes on Commander Rookie in that mid lane. Because when it comes to late game 5v5s, you have a better front line for WE. You have the Janna to keep them healed up as well. I feel like if it goes slow and it goes steady, WE will win this series. NIP need to accelerate. Gotta see more from NIP. We gotta see more from this Talia in the mid lane. Rookie, once again on a signature pick, once again can control things. If he's given the setup, if the rest of the team is on the same page, let's see if the Talia is enough to push this series to game five and keep NIP in the series. But WE, they've got everything they could want out of this draft. This is their comfort zone, and they're on the cusp of an upset.
I don't know if it's just me, but I yeah. feel like the WE Gios are getting stronger. And the NIP Gios, quite the opposite, unfortunately. Perhaps the fans losing faith at this point with how these games have been going. It does feel WE favoured right now. With, uh, I mean, the fact that they have an extra game in the series, that's always going <laughs> to help <laughs> feel favoured. But uh, it does feel like, honestly, to me, WE have been the better team so far today. We need to see NIP show us something more if they're going to go to five games in this series. And to me, that more they need to show us is just how to get the game going faster. Chain more plays together in a shorter period of time. Not kind of like hesitate before pulling that trigger so much. I think that NIP, they get spooked when they, they know they've lost vision and they're playing around Fog of War. I feel like they just need to be a little bit more bold. And then WE, if they kind of made sure that NIP aren't playing with full information, and if they can keep doing that again, I feel like NIP are in a very, very big spot of bother as we head into this laning phase. Let's see if anything can start off well with Rookie getting pushed. Maybe him influencing the map early. Oh, Hail of Blazing Chad is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> nice trade, though. Coming back from Juan and Fotic, the heal comes out from the queue as well. So still will be NIP with Pryo. Obviously, on the Jinx versus Zeri, you kind of anticipate there's the, the Pryo going the way of the Jinx anyway, but nice little bit of trading to start off from WE. And they will be eventually forced out. Nice cues from Joel. Being able to get both heals this mm. early in the laning phase really does help. Oh, yeah. Every time you, we talk about Rakan, we think, well, why is Rakan so good in laning phase? Uh, because if he hits cues after the last round of buffs he had on that ability, just makes it so hard to um, keep HP differentials sticking. He hits those cues, and everyone's all healed up after that point. So early push achieved by Photo Control and bot side. Not surprising when you've got the Jinx versus the Zeri, so he doesn't have wave clear until. Uh, much later into the game, Frodo gets it all the way from level 1. That means that NIP pushing mid, pushing bot. They have a ward into the enemy jungle on both jungle entrances. So Hung will be spotted whichever way he chooses to leave the spot side jungle, which gives some information to Aki, but he was just spotted on his ward on the way in. There was no ping on him, but you would expect that information to be there. Hung looking for the smite. We'll find it. Good combo with the Q. Aki gets a little bit of a trade and Actually moving into the jungle, maybe looking at the wolves here. Rookie in a position where he could potentially follow up as I think there's yeah. a big wave about to crash in the mid lane. And I think in bot side as well, Joel had a chance to, to roam up from bot lane too. Again, it's very hard to force a fight with Jana um, in terms of hard engage. You're not playing a Nautilus, which can hook in the AD carry in that 2v1. So as you can see, Joel is moving up into bot ready. You can see that Stay and I want it up been forced to back off, trying to defend this Gromp take. Oh, Smite comes out from Aki as well. So Wolves and Grump stolen oh, away. Dashes across. And obviously, we saw Hung had to use his Smite on that blue buff before. So that now means that not only those two camps taken, as a bit of an engage on the bottom side. Flame Chomp is there onto Iwandi as well. Stay forced out. But importantly, off of the back of those two camps, also the Scuttle Crab at the bottom side. Yeah, we'll see what can happen towards top side. Oh. Is the shot back into Turret? Turret aggro dropped those away, but not able to get the... Full kill onto Shanji, but three pushing lanes means that Aki potentially gets a double scuttle and a double camp steal into the enemy jungle. This is insane jungle diff in the early lane, uh, early laning phase, really, because you know all three pushing lanes allow Aki to get so far ahead of the game. This Maokai is not going to be very happy in terms of XP and gold. Not the way that they're wanting it to go. Still, all in all, positive signs here for NIP. And I'm going to be honest, I'm glad because I'm, I'm a little bit nervous for them in this series now. I'm starting to lose a bit of faith. Um, when I'm saying, like, we need to see a bit more, it's not just, like, in terms of... I, I, I like Rookie, you know? I like yeah. Photic. I <laughs> want these tell. guys... Couldn't tell. <laughs> I want these guys to, to do well. I want to see these guys succeed, but it just doesn't feel like it's happening. Dive in the middle lane from Joel. Just takes one turret shot for his trouble, but Fofo forced back. And again, the supports. I swear they've spent more time in the mid lane this series than they have in bot. Oh, man. That's been one of the big things that's kind of changed in the LPL in general. Sometime midway through the split, we saw um, a lot of big changes, particularly in the champions that were played in terms of Nautilus making his way back into the meta, uh, much more than just the occasional pick. Uh, because it was a lot of range supports before then, but then we've seen a lot of mid lane roams come with that too. With them being so active on the map, it means that they're going to be going towards this bot side dragon as well. Would be a 2v3. Hung's not going towards that. Hung needs to take camps. He can't really be contesting that much. If he can get himself some grubs, at least that's some XP back as Aki takes dragon on bot side. So Aki will grab that objective. Vision is there for both teams on the grubs, so 
Hung starts that one up, but NIP will have information of that in fact. Shangji's been able to get Cryo up top, so maybe there's some angle of a contest, but you'd expect at least a couple of grubs to go over to WE before anything can come through. I guess, well, the first one's gone over, and the first one gives the double XP. That's the important thing. He gets two with the smite. He has himself... Maybe might have flash um, thrown here, actually. Rookie's trying to cut him off. What's going to happen here? Well, flashes actually goes on to Rookie, but Aki flashes into the plate as well. Hung, knocked up. There's the stun to follow it up. Can they actually finish the job? Red buff, take it away. And Rookie finishes off first blood. Bad at to worst for the tree man in the jungle. Hung goes down, and it has been a comprehensive shutdown from all three lanes of the ninjas in pajamas. They're uh, sticking the knives in nice and early this time. It's another first blood. Four for four in terms of first blood from NIP. Been very successful on that amount. They've got themselves some good leads in the jungle. Now uh, an extra kill into mid lane as well will definitely not go amiss. So good start in the early game from NIP. That hasn't been where the questions in this series have been though from NIP. But this is a good start. Need to see them go more than this though. What are they going to do to make sure this Maokai never becomes a factor? Aki already a full level up over Hung in the jungle matchup. Been really benefiting from the pressure that's been put out from the team. First blood yeah. going over onto the jungle adds insult I, to injury. I do wonder if Fofo could have saved Hung there. Like, had Empress Divide available? I don't know if he just didn't want to, you know, get too much in the mix and potentially risk losing his own life as well. Either way, kind of just, <laughs> kind of just watching his jungler die, honestly, which is. They expect uh, one of us in the wreckage, brother. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this <laughs> it's pretty odd brand for Fofo, honestly, across his career. Uh, very much a, a player that's playing for his lane as opposed to uh, the rest of the map. I mean. In fairness to him, he's done a good job with it when he's had actually good laning lead. So, you know, while it is funny, and as a juggler, you're sat there going, damn, wish my mid laner moved for that one. He has been putting some dividends out of that too, so I'm not going to uh, judge him too harshly for that one. Top side matchup, um, Renekton for Shanji. At least got that early push and got some value out of it. Um, need to really see what happens around this top side matchup from Wayward. He has been a very strong frontline for his team on the Rex side. He might get him 2v1 here. The Renekton Sejuani, very powerful combo. Dominus pop. Here we go, W, not gonna buff for any of the CC, never mind, buff for it, he's one shot. Oh my word, Wayward gets absolutely slaughtered in the top side, butchered up by the Butcher of the Sands. Renekton in that top side, so Shanji, talks about uh, him and Wayward vying in years past to be rookie of the split, back on their debut splits, and in this one, trying to get the better of each other, it's mainly gone the way of Wayward, but with the Renekton Sejuani definitely adding some extra value in, oh. combat mid lane, I wonder he gets burst, wow. He died in the previous uh, Janna versus Talia game. This time, Rocket flying across the map. But there's no one there. Okay, the Observer's kind of baited me there. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I want you to back off well into his own jungle to make sure that he could get out safely. He has himself a boost of swiftness to get himself more quickly back onto the map as well. But, um, you know, this Janna, not the first time that we've seen him kind of not really find good value into mid lane 3v3 plays. Uh, the last time, of course, it was the Rakan as well. Um, you know, this Janna hasn't really managed to survive, well, get early lane presence against the Rakan. I know that Rakan can get punished by the Janna if you jump into a tornado, it can be very difficult. But then also not being able to out skirmish as well. It feels like Iwandi has not really had the best of this particular champion matchup in this series today. Yeah, it doesn't feel that way, does it? Especially considering how quickly and confidently he slams it in the draft. <laughs> I will say, I, I kind of want to talk about the top laners a little bit here. Uh, in terms of matchups as well, because it does feel like Wayward, while he's had a, a very good day today on that Rex site, it has been specifically when it's in the right matchup, right? That we saw the Rumble game earlier from Shanji, and that looked absolutely fantastic. Crowded himself an MVP, like really took over the game. Now on this Renekton, feels like having a much better game when he's not up against that Rex site. So I'm, I'm hoping we get a little bit more out of Shanji than what we have been seeing outside of that Rumble game. And maybe this is the Renekton game. We've seen him using Aki, having that Sejuani up to pressure in the top side. Maybe this is the chance now to show that NIP can still dominate that top side. I, I love the optimism. I just have played, I, I have played Renekton into Jana before and I have wanted to cease playing the game. Sometimes you just sat there and the disengage is too much. So Shanji, it's a lot on him to make sure that the cooldowns are down from, you know, Emperor's Divide, the All Out from where we're trying to shut you out of the fight, Maokai ult, and then the hop over the wall from Zeri, and the Q and the R from Janna. So I'm sat there just thinking, well, I mean, it's nice to have that lead into 1v1. Um, team fights are a different question, so we shall see. You know what? I'm going to err on the side of just being kind here. We'll see. Um, not an easy one, though. No. But then, 
it's not meant to be easy in LPL playoffs. That's sort of uh, why these guys are here is because they're good at the not easy stuff, you would hope <laughs> at very least. Uh, Chwell could threaten to dive here on to stay, honestly. Aki's in the area, but in fact, Drake is up on the map. So NIP going to be focused on that neutral objective. They got the first one of the game as well. You can see Hung not even close to the area. He wants more of those grubs. He does. Um, now the thing is, Early in the split when Azir, before the, 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 the good days of Azir being disabled uh, came through, um, <laughs> Azir being put into a side lane with Grubs was really powerful because you get towards Nash's Tooth first item a lot of the time, um, and then you just get to hit a side lane turret with the Grub buff. Azir is already massively good at killing those side lane turrets. You get a lot of gold for it, which against the ghost popped up here. Now you're going to get you know multiple Grubs taken from WE. Need to see Fofo get the ability to hit some turrets. Feels like he's the one person who's going to get good value killing side lanes in this game. Rookie roam down off the back of Fofo resetting to try and look for an angle in this bottom lane. Stay will just commit to the recall here. Fotic will crash the wave. Don't really anticipate him sticking around here, yeah. to be honest. He's going to have to go for a reset as well. well. But we're seeing first items coming on through now. Seeing first items coming through. And I was just wondering what was it. So I was just looking at the minimap. So Fofo is going to tag on towards bot side. And we just talked about five items. Na five, uh, five items would be very, very scary for the start point of the game. <laughs> five uh, items five in 11 minutes. Uh, incredible. Day. Never seen this before. It's actually just five glowing moats. The most powerful power spike. I think, wow, so much build here. <laughs> um, you have Nash's Tooth, five grubs. And now because NIP... Um, they, they kind of like, you know, they left this reset to kind of get that plate down there uh, after they got that plate down there. I wonder how much time Fofa's going to get on the tower. Sadly for him, NIP managed to stick around bot side just a little well enough, but NIP needs to be very careful not to allow Fofa onto a turret. If he gets that, honestly, like two plates are just disappearing immediately. So, but now the bot lane's shifting into mid lane. It felt like W were trying to buy a way for Fofa to hit turret. Can't quite get that though, sadly for themselves. See, stay. We'll be able to get prior mid for a second here. Now, usually, stack shiv on both sides. You still expect Jinx to be getting prior, but uh, Votic had stepped away to grab himself a little red buff there, and we'll be able to maintain presence. It's like, oh, you can have a red buff. Hey, you know, you've been a good AD carry this game. Get yourself a red buff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rookie forced to flash here, and Fofo's going to follow it as well. I want these here to try and set up the kill for his mid laner. Fofo needs to take all oh, oh, He arrives and saves the day. Rocket in from downtown. Fotic cleaning things up as Fofo will fall. And what looks beautiful for WE falls apart in seconds. Oh, Aki, the hero from the jungle, comes in to save the. A real carry of this team for so much of this split rookie. Aki coming in in a crucial clutch moment. If WE had gotten that kill, they could have gotten a, a you know, Azir onto that bot side turret for free. Not to be the case. Fofo goes down. This is a big moment. That should have been such a big breaking point for WE. As it stands, NIP, they stave off that assault. They get to go put Rookie back into top lane now. I'm going to go back into a replay to see how it happens. See that Iwandi on the roam. Doesn't quite hit himself the, the Q, but the slows is enough to at least force Rookie into a difficult position. He can't quite get behind Rookie to shunt him oh. back with the ult. Back into live, though. Shanji in a 1v3. Uh, I was going to say a dive, but they're just between towers here. Shanji can't even get the sustain off, just take it down. Nice bit of map play from WE, catching out the enemy solo laner as Rookie tries to trade in the top side, but Fofo's on the top. Oh no, the plates fell off! Fofo doesn't oh. get any of the plate gold! Oh, that's a shame. They're still going to get themselves first turret down there, because again, it's the Azir on the turret, but still, that's kind of lazy from NIP. You can't split the map that well, especially since you don't have the Dominus on Shanji to be safer in that, do in that, um, in that bot side, kind of weak side of the map. At least Rookie is going to get himself Turret on this top side as Recompense kills an entire wave to that one. But just while we were saying, hey, you know, it would have been a fantastic moment in that last play for WE to get onto that bot lane out of turret for free with the Nash's two, five Grub is it. They do get it eventually. <laughs> Foti wants absolutely everything, and he gets it as well. Chicken nuggets on top of a fillet. And uh, he's not going to be hungry anymore. He's already finished his cult as well. This is a big old jinx that's starting to build up off the back of that kill in the bottom side. Already Shiv. There, 30 CS lead on the AD carry then IP. Yeah, and I think particularly if you get towards, you know, three, four items, you're going to get towards, um, I mean, we'll see something like the fire cannon potential or, or, or um, something like that coming the in. Hurricane, yeah. The hurricane or something like that. You know, you're going to see a little bit more attack speed. I think once you get towards Infinity Edge and Lord Dom, so towards um, four items, you're going to be in a really powerful spot. I do think that, you know, with this build, I, I almost wonder if you should have gone towards a bit more of the um, like the core AD damage build just before that. I feel like uh, going towards like a second attack speed item in this game when your job is cutting through frontline, maybe that one's not going to help quite as much. See, I want to 
<laughs> trying to trade against Voting there. He's feeling it as uh, the Janna. I like it. I like the <laughs> the one, the Janna one v ones. If there's anyone that knows this champion's limitations, it is I wonder. He's played so much of this champion over the years. Before he was even a pro, he was a Janna one trick streamer. So this guy, he knows the ropes. At this point, very happy to go for these trades. Mm. Let's see what the build is going to be. Obviously, the nice thing for Jinx is uh, these attack speed items obviously getting quite a lot of it, like we already talked about. Shiv having quite a lot of stats on it. But you do get a reasonable amount of AD on your attack speed items these days yeah, compared true. to how the items used to be back in the day. Yeah, particularly since I, I think the nice one's going to be the Kraken Slayer as the item coming through as well, thinking about it again, um, in terms of just what I've been seeing from Jinx builds recently. Do you get the Herald um, into that turret? And if you do start popping off with the lethal tempo and then the extra attack speed as well, it's very, very hard to stop this champion from killing your squishies. You're just killing that first target, which is going to be the problem. Dragon has spawned WE. They have themselves ults. They have themselves a pick, though, onto their own players. Nice combo. Hung taken down. NIP making it look easy as Hong just kind of walks into all five of them. Flicked back by Ricky and uh, set up beautifully. That's going to be three tricks in NIP. I, <laughs> if you showed me this game in isolation, I wouldn't have even believed they were down in the series. It's going to be the flip back once again onto Wayward as well. Now he doesn't have a W, he doesn't have the extra damage reduction. He's going to go down here. He actually can, he's dashed to his teammates. The rocket onto Fofo doesn't betray his team, stays away from the AoE. <laughs> Gosh, one of the big differences here. I was thinking that, you know, oh, Fozik would have loved to see an early Lord Domus regards to kill through the front line. Um, that's completely forgetting about the early game from Hunk. He is so far down in this jungle matchup. He's a level down. Um, he's been really cut out of this game. And this Maokai, who's gone for a Kainic Rook end first, is not going to be um, a tanky front line. He's level 9 here. He's two levels down on the AD carry. Foti just walks up alongside the flick back from Rookie. This Maokai is not a tank due to the early pressure put out from NIP. The first clear has shut this Maokai out of the game. And that's a huge problem for WE now. They need to play front to back. They don't have backline engaged. Not really, unless Wayward gets a really insane angle. He needs to be there in the front line. He needs to be there pressing W in front of the big skill shots. And that's going to be a big problem. Because that's going to unlock Fotix to just run forward and get resets. Are we just seeing a Rek'Sai diff <laughs> in this series? <laughs> Is that what we are witnessing here today? I will say, fantastic uh, game so far from NIP. You know, having advantageous lanes is definitely helping them out. The fact that they had such a strong early game off the back of these winning lanes. But the question remains, as it always does with NIP, can they close it out? They've got themselves a big lead, over 3,000. They've got themselves three drakes. They've just got to dot the I's and cross the T's. Doesn't help when you're missing cannons like there, Mr. Fotik. That's the second one. <laughs> Mid lane that one. Looks good. LPL observers, they don't miss this stuff. Wayward oh. missing his ult now. Wayward going real deep on this one into four people. Rocket comes out. Second fight in a row where he just about gets away with his life. But that's kind of Cassante's speciality. Uh, it is. He's got a teleport to go back, regen, and come back into the play. But it doesn't stop the fact that NIP are walking forwards, throwing down vision in the enemy jungle, and just throwing more rocks under this tower as well. Mid lane out of turret slowly broken down nip taking a very important structure and whereas in the previous game where it felt like they did actually have an early game lead and they couldn't push that advantage they are actually finding some important moments here because it feels like particularly hung and wayward are not strong enough to back up the rest of their team in terms of like surviving long enough for the follow-up to actually be realistic on the other side of things they're going to be waiting a long time before fofo and stay feel safe enough behind their front line to really team fight effectively. Yes, there are two items on Fofo, but it's so hard to team fight as um, a backline when your front line is losing. Front line diff is a very real thing at the top level of play. It certainly is. Especially when you've got these carries that snowball fight so effectively as well. Like both Jinx and Zeri essentially stack up off of the front line. You know, Zeri stacking the ultimate, Jinx getting the excited passive, and also, I guess, pow pow to some extent. But the point being, Whoever kills that front line first, then just pops off for the rest of the fight. That's a dangerous situation to be in as the team who got front line diffed, as you worded it. Baron up on the map now, and NIP looking to shift their vision control up there. Already some deep vision from them. Hung desperately trying to fight against that. And you recall in from Rookie, presumably that's going to be a Leandri's completed as his second item. We do currently see, though, the fact that we uh, have a couple of members on the board for just a moment. Means that they can push in mid lane. For that, they can start throwing down the cheat wards of the Maokai Saplings, one of the most broken champions of the game in pro, because he can just throw saplings down and effectively 
bypass that ward cap. Means that uh, much easier to keep yourself some extra presence in that top side. Bofo, he's trying to do as much work as he can, but NIP, I feel like as it's soon as start they get the opportunity, they're going to bait this at the very least. They have the Sejuani ult to throw over the wall, and let's be honest, who gets the face check from WE? It is just Wayward, who's currently on the bot side of the map with Teleport. Very easy to blow the Teleport, a bare minimum from NIP. Then they probably just go back to straight to the Baron afterwards. That should be the bread and butter play for them. Certainly should. Mid prio acquired. Photic starts to move on over as Shanji clears the wave. So Pryo in all three lanes here for the side of NIP. TP's available for both top laners. TP's available for both mid laners as well. But a reset comes through from Joel. He's picked up a Mikhail's now. Oh, that's all coming down. Big pick up as Wayward forced to ult. That's a really awkward moment now because Wayward doesn't have the ability to disrupt the backline without his ultimate. He's already, you know, trying to do double duty in frontline because Hang is not really a frontline right now. I am a little surprised that NIP didn't go for the Baron bait at that point because now if they were to go towards something after they set up the vision, it would overlap with the Dragon, which is Matt and Soul for them. I figure if they'd managed to buy a teleport from Wayward, they could back off of the Baron and then play around the Matt and Soul, which is coming up in 30 seconds. So maybe a missed opportunity there and does kind of mirror some of our opinions about how NIP have not necessarily closed out games through objectives as well as potentially with like in the late game. Oh. But now has the face check though, and this would definitely help NIP. No ultimate available this time for Wayward, and Dominus is there for Shanji. He might just go down. Quickness gonna be used by Juo. Sets up for the finish from Shanji. And Shanji and absolutely odds. winning the top matchup. This time, Hung's caught out in the meantime. Elsewhere on the map, an NIP. Two picks right as Dragon Soul spawns. That is perfect. We may be eyeing down some silver scrapes here, Nymera. NIP wants to take us the distance. They want to make sure they have a last hurrah at this one. Fofo, stay, Iwandi. Sticking around to see if there is anything left to say. But it is a 3v5. What can they realistically do? Oh, look at this flank. Oh, okay. Rookie doesn't quite find the knockback and Fofo trades back onto him, but there's no smite here for WE, so it will be Drake taken. Mountain Soul, and now Draw can dive into the action, staying Fofo forced away, but Shanshi is behind enemy lines, and he's diving onto the backline. Fofo pushes him under the tower, but it just doesn't matter. It's a stats diff at this point, on top of a numbers diff. It's on top of an NIP diff. The ninjas bury the blade in Team WE, and they are determined to take us to a game five. It will be the second one, two days back to back out of three series only just played in LPL playoffs. I mean, let's be honest, folks, everywhere from about sixth down to 10th in LPL playoffs in terms of seeding was oh so close coming down to the final week of play. It means that these teams really are finally matched between them. We were talking about how NIP had full control over the map, particularly over Baron. This one felt like, you know, because the soul was just spawning, Wayward has to do something, but he's too far from his team. I think it's a bit of a greedy face check, knowing there's no follow-up behind him. He's just hoping for the best, and the best has absolutely not come for him. On the other side, hung the other front lineup, showing how far behind in the game he is. NIP, they're walking back onto the map, eyeing up Dragon now, uh, Baron now, rather, in live picture. WE feeling the pressure here. The fact that you're staying around 3v4 without a jungler kind of shows the amount of pressure that they were feeling to try and contest this. Uh, but in oh, the meantime, he's dead again. Oh, it's been caught out and another ult lands it's onto Bofo. Forced away the rocket, hits onto both carries too. Hung gives over the reset as the rocket flies on by, nearly kills the wolf. <laughs> as they've come out of their pit to join in the play. NIP absolutely destroying them. They're not. They're still in their pajamas. <laughs> Haven't even needed to get into their business wear for this one. They get themselves roll out of bed and slam in a five game series, all the more likely against Team WE. It's another fight. Again, it's not going to be the end of the game here and now, but with such a huge gold lead with Mountain Salt, with Vision Control on top side, and with three members dead from WE, it's going to be Baron. It's going to be resets. It's going to be the end of the game. Surely after that point, is WE scrambling to mount a last ditch defense. Looking for the opportunity, but realistically, there's nothing else to be done here. NIP, outside of a monumental throw, this one is in the bag, and it feels like Rookie's Talia is a very key part of that equation, but also Shanxi having a good matchup in that top lane. This game felt like a bit of a lane difference and a much better draft than what we've been seeing.
Yeah, it really does feel like NIP have been uh, turning the screws a lot more effectively than they did in the last game, but they had a lead, but they couldn't see it out. Once again, you're just using the fact that the front line from WE just can't face check. They can't face check. Wayward can't, Hung can't. No one else is, is even remotely tanky enough. And that means that even though you have two late game scaling carries, they have no platform to do damage off of. NIP really just tearing this game apart. Oh, and they've even found a little bonus onto Fofo with the bottom side. He zips back in to try and do something to Fotec, but it just is not happening. Yeah. And my goodness. I will say, this series, while it's close in terms of the series overall, the individual games have been very one-sided today. It, it takes a little while. And uh, do you reckon if Fofo gets hit by another ult from Sejuani, he becomes Froyo instead? Bit of a bit of a chill treat? Um, I guess. I, I'm lactose intolerant, so I'm not, not a big fan <laughs> of the frozen yogurt-based humor. Uh, it makes my... Wow, thanks. I tried that. I tried really hard there. Fofo can't really try much harder in this game. He doesn't really have the items, and he doesn't exactly have a life right now. Yeah. Feels like uh, a bit more of a Frodo, because it feels like he's playing with nine fingers at this point. <laughs> uh, that's a bit unfair, because I don't think Fofo's had that bad of a series. In the meantime, Fotic is just cleaning house here. I want to be taken down using the Jinx Excite to uh, finish things off, to snowball these fights. In the meantime, Shanji pushing up top. And I mean, <laughs> look, when NIP are winning the games, they are clean with it, you have to admit. They are. Um, I feel like both these teams, it's uh, therefore really based on how the early game and the draft goes. A lot of the time, if the, if the NIP um, early game goes well with the composition that they're happy with, they're pretty good at closing it out. Uh, it which is something that we've had some um, concerns about coming through about the teams. Okay, they get themselves from leads, can they close it out? Feels like with the drafts becoming a little bit more comfortable and removing some matchups away from Iwandi and Wayward, they've managed to find their way under W skin. That's not going to be another frozen treat for NIP as the ult goes wide from Aki, but they still have themselves a push oh. into these threats. Held and out. Oh, okay, that's an engage. Fotic took a good chunk of damage there, but there's not really enough to finish the job, and he still survives. Aki keeps them away as Iwandi falls, and it is just a bit like. If the gold is less than 15,000 in favor of NIP, maybe that's a fight win for WE. But alas, <laughs> that is not the case, and Fotic survives. Yeah, buried under the weight of NIP's bank accounts in this one. And you're just keeping up the siege. Fofo, you got to be careful there. Oh Another boy. crit comes through, and Fotic will kill you. you got to be very careful. Has himself flash. And Sadly, doesn't have himself any team members to look for a shuffle play. It's going to be another in-hip down uh, in the mid lane. They can go straight towards topside after this as well, but actually probably shouldn't think about it. There's uh, Elder up in 30 seconds. If they get themselves a reset, WE, um, yes, you could say that, oh, yeah, but there's always the chance of an Elder Steal. Look, if you're getting in range to get an Elder Steal, you have to go through a significant amount of damage, and you're probably dying just after that anyway. So WE really, really preying on a, on a miracle. Multiple items, third items now completed across the board from NIP. Still only two and a half for state. Basically a full item behind on the Jinx now. Or versus the Jinx, I should say. WE here, though. They're going to start this Elder off. This is the miracle that they need. Ooh, but that ow. ain't Iwandi caught again as he goes down. And it's the Drake to finish the job. One last blast as NIP charge on forwards in the series. The wall comes out as Rookie actually stunned out of it. Wayward keeps the mid laner out of the fight, but I don't think it's going to matter. His voting is untouched elsewhere. Redemption comes on through to keep NIP going, but Wayward has actually found one kill, and Stay is stacking up. Surely this isn't how it ends. NIP forced away. They do survive, but Elder now started by WE. It's not the first time we've seen Atalia interrupted, and now Rookie won't be here for the fight. Going down to a flip for Elder. Oh god, it's too tense. Hung is there. Aki jumps into the pit, and he gets it. No! NIP denied. Aki can't find it. And WE get Elder. While this is happening, there are two waves of super minions taking down the Nexus turrets of WE, but Jana Shields and the turret just about helped that one. You can see that there's a, a recall stop by a Jinx Rocket, but that is it. Wayward, heroics around the bot side of that fight to stop Rookie being the difference maker. He chooses this angle as he always does. He tries to cut off the play, but if you get in his head and you manage to predict where this wall is going to come in, yeah, you can just knock him off of it. This um, Kasante has struggled to be a frontline in the 5v5, but in a 1v1 versus a carry with no defensive stats late into the game, doesn't matter that you can't stand up to the Jinx and the Talia. If you can make it about just one of them, you can make things happen. Wayward seriously saving the game here and giving a last gasp here for WE. And so crucial after 
what has to be his worst game of the series. He's been caught out a few times, but makes the hero play happen. Aki tries to get in here, but just pinned against the wall. Hung, great spite out from him. Aki was in contention there to get the spite, but unfortunately can't find it. Wayward doing a good job to be that bruiser. Yeah. My goodness, it's tense. And now, what, they've got a minute left on Elder. It's not really going to be enough for WE to find a lead or anything like that, but it's kept him in the game, and that's what matters. Well, I mean, the gold lead was about 15,000, now it's yeah. about 10,000. You're still against the Mountain Soul, but we're getting towards the point where gold is meaning less. It's not quite the point where it means nothing, because we've still got items to be completed on NIP. So we haven't capped out on builds, but all the same, WE, um, it's a big moment for the Teleport away from the side lane from Rookie. He wanted to push that one out. Baron going to be taken by WE. Shot. This is going to get one shot, but you don't want to play against the Elder anyway. Realistically, NIP, I don't think they want to be fighting for this. They want to stop recalls at best. Another objective bounty claimed by WE. Resets can come on through here. I don't think Aki can do much about it. Maybe they could just kill Aki, honestly. Kind of separate from the team, but I wonder he will finish his recall. NIP get nothing. Baron taken off of the board, as was Elder. And actually, WE have bought themselves a lot of time here, denying that Baron. Stay has been scaling up this whole time. And now you're getting to the point where, you know, you've got a Renekton who is not going to be a frontline, especially against the um, carries of Fofo and Stay. If he doesn't end up getting onto a carry very quickly, we talked about how hellish it is as a Renekton playing into this team composition without the good angles later into the game against Jhana or against the Emperor's Divide. Shanji's job is going to get harder. Wayward, he's getting towards three, four items, going to get easier for him. NIP, they're waiting till us, uh, see if they can yeah. get themselves um, an inhib against the Baron buff. WE, they can potentially look for a flank now with Wayward on the side. It's a game of finishing the job. Oh, knockup does land onto Aki. That's a good bit of damage as Wayward threatening on the backside of the play. Aki's still alive here as Redemption comes in. Wayward buffering CC, getting the knockbacks. Juo next on the target. It's two kills for Stay. NIP struggling to end games all split long. And now, as they're pushed to the brink, Stay takes down Fotic and WE make another miracle. NIP have taken down three inhibs in this game, maybe even more than that, but they can't take down the damn Nexus. NIP, we've always criticized them for not finishing off the games when it felt like it's in their hands. WE, they still have objective bounties to take, but it doesn't matter. They're winning the fights. They stop uh, Wait, Wait, Wavers just died on the other side, though. They need to be careful. He's <laughs> just going to end the game. They have to reset because Way would just go 1v1 by Shanji. Uh, I mean, this is just awkward at this point, but my god, WE hanging on by their fingernails, but hanging on nonetheless. Hanging on just about Shanji. Heroics there in his own right. We've used that word a couple of times because it feels so, so appropriate. Managing to separate the front line from the back line out, WE managed to really show how much their carries can do. Most of this game has been a difference in front line. With the Jana Q hitting in late game onto Sidwani to separate them away from their front line, WE finally find a gap in the armor in a team fight in a straight 5v5. See that, you know, Renekton's not a part of this play realistically. And WE, <laughs> see how happy the fans look. They know that the game is on now. This game is no longer 15,000 gold no. in the advantage of NIP. This is a fair it's, fight. Look, it's 3,000 gold difference at this point. Elder coming up in a minute and a half. Now, that Mountain Soul still counts for a lot. The front line is still very difficult to get if Aki isn't caught out by a tornado and whatnot. But Hung exists at this point. He's no longer that tree that was massively behind in the jungle. He's at the same level as Aki at this point. He's on three items. This is a tank on the side of WE. They've got a late game as here. They've got a late game Zeri. This is not over. And that kind of... That kind of given win that we were believing in 10 minutes ago, it's basically gone. This very much could be the last game of the series if WE can keep this performance alive that's been happening for the last few minutes. And for a team like the Ninjas in Pajamas, which promised a lot with this roster, this would be, well, it would be something of a cap to this split. That would not be what they want. This roster, we expected great things. I mean, I guess WE on the other side, we thought that they could be promising too, particularly after mid-split. Fofo showing on the side lane, though. We've got Hung here too. Is there a turret to be put up? There's no Zonyas here for Fofo. He gets up with the shuffle. 
Slides himself to safety, dodges the knockup. Shanji flashes in Empress to fight to keep him alive as long as possible. But the rocket flies on through, and Fofo is found. WE to punish, though, as both solo laners have sacrificed themselves to find the Azir. Shanji cannot survive and stay. Doesn't go down. A knuckle comes through, but there's no damage because he was Fotic? in the GA. In the meantime, Fotic only just arriving. Shanji still going strong as Wayward's on the backside. Fotic getting some resets here, but Stay is still alive. It's 3v3 now. Oh, absolute carnage in the top side, but NIP might just come out on top because Fotix getting his reset. That's two, make it three. Fotix finds four, and NIP push to five. NIP are made to fight for it, but they fight with bare knuckles. The ninjas can't find a clean assassination, but they will with bloodied lips find themselves towards a final game in this series. I don't think the death timers will do it. Five seconds left on Fofo. They still need to get through a turret. Maybe he can pull off something, but I just don't think it'll be enough. Short of a miracle, this one is done. Get excited for Fotic means he's got the damage to take the Fountain, to take the Nexus, and to push us to Silver Scrapes. NIP, they hang on and they push us further from a 15,000 gold advantage to having to win in a fair fight. It's not the game end that they would have wanted. And there is uh, maybe some knocks to the confidence there as well from the ninjas, but still, they walk away with a win. A win is a win. We find yeah. ourselves split down the knife's edge for game five. It's a second silver scrape in two days. It's uh, it's something, that's for sure. NIP, that should have been an easy win. It was a win in the end, but my god. WE, fair play, absolute heroics coming out from this squad to keep them in there, but it means we go to five games. We're going to jump into a break, and we'll be back in a few for the climax of this series. You do 